Hi everyone, Mr. E here, and in this 3D printing tutorial video, I'm gonna show you how to combine all of these different types of filament with a single extruder print head. So you might be wondering, why would I be combining all of these different filaments? Now you could be combining different colors, which is what this is. These are all PLA. So you could be combining different colors for a really cool 3D printed effect, or you could be combining different materials. So for example, you might want to combine conductive filament and non-conductive filament to make something like this 3D printed flashlight, or even flexible rubber filament like TPU for this rubber grippy tire with a solid rim to make this part for a model car. And the same thing could be done for something like a phone case or whatever. Now, the cool thing is you don't necessarily need a super fancy dual extruder or triple extruder or quad extruder print head to do this. There are a lot of different ways to combine different filaments, even with a very basic, simple, single extruder. A popular method, if you really wanna do a lot of multicolor printing is through something like the Prusa Multi-Material Mod or a palette, which allows you to actually automatically, or it actually allows the, some type of computer system to automatically change your filaments for you and load them into your single extruder. Another super popular method that is actually my preferred method is to 3D print the separate parts, separate materials, and then assemble them in post-processing. So for example, with my little car tire here, the TPU rim was actually printed separately, and then this was all assembled with the tire and the rim. And I prefer that because while it is a little bit more difficult from the design side, it's a little bit easier to manage. And you can make some really cool stuff like my 3D printed lightsaber. All of these parts were 3D printed separately and then simply glued together in post-processing. And that's a lot easier to manage. But there are some limitations, of course. You might want to do something like this where you have interwoven types of filament so you can do this really cool type of design. To do this, you need the dual extrusion method or one of the filament changing methods like the palette. And that's because if you want to do something like this where you have this interwoven simultaneous multicolor, you need to be able to print different filaments in the same layer. But the cool thing is, you can still get really awesome multicolor effects with a single extruder. And this is what I'm gonna show you in the tutorial. So I'm gonna show you how to automatically pause at a certain layer, so that way with your single extruder, you can make single solid 3D printed parts. This was not glued together, but with different filament changes. Let's get started. Now, the first thing you need is a 3D design. So I have this Lowell's Lesson ornament design in Tinkercad, and to do this filament changing, each color needs to essentially have a distinguished height. So you can see that I'm gonna start with white, and then at some point I need to switch to black, and then my green is my top layer, and that is the most extruding part. So each filament change is gonna happen at a significant moment in my design, so that way in the end, it looks like my finished product, that's this triple colored product. So now that we've exported this as an STL, when we drop into Cura, we can see that we're back to being just a single color part, but that's totally fine. Now I'm using Cura Lulzbot Edition 3.6.37. However, you can do this in older versions of Cura LE, as well as Cura 2, and even Ultimaker Cura works pretty similar. And I'm using my Lulzbot Mini 2 with the single extruder head, and I haven't really changed any settings. So I'm just running at a pretty standard uh, print setting here. So I need to slice this and then go into my layer view. And that way I can scroll through my layers and see at which layer height I wanna do my color changes. So we can see that my green starts at layer 14 and my black starts at layer seven. So I need to know these numbers so that way I can know what layer I need to pause my print at. We're then gonna go into the extensions window and then post processing. And here we actually wanna click on the script that's called pause at height or layer. So you can do a specific height. So let's say for example, your part's 100 millimeters tall. You know you wanna pause at 20 millimeters. You can just punch that in right here at the pause height. I'm gonna to switch to layer number and I'm gonna put my first pause at layer seven. So this is going to pause at layer seven and you can actually make it pause just for a certain number of time. You can also change the standby temperature or the resume temperature. So by default, it's gonna actually cool down. So that way, if this let's say pauses overnight, 
Uh, it'll cool down and then you can heat up the nozzle when you do your filament change. Or you can actually have it to set the standby at a certain temperature, like 200 degrees, if you just wanna be able to run right into your filament change. That's kind of up to you. By default, everything's kind of set to be zero and just to kind of hang out and wait for you to come back. I'm then going to add a second script, pause at height or layer, and this one I'm going to set to be layer 14, and that's actually going to be for my green. So now I have these two pause at height or layer filament changes. Now, nothing changes when I go to slice here. So I press prepare and I slice, and you're not going to notice anything visual other than the fact that there's a little tool icon down by your save button here. So you can't really see the pauses other than if you actually went and checked your G code, you would see the pause command at these particular layers. So we're gonna save, load this on our printer, and get to printing. So my printer automatically paused, and now I need to do my filament change. And the key is to be as delicate as you can. You don't wanna put a lot of stress on the print head. So I like to use the little wheel on the standard extruder head to just unwind and load my filament because I'm not trying to push down super hard. Make sure that your filament's really pointy when you go to feed it. And then you can use the purge function to purge additional filament as needed. When I press continue, I need to make sure that my Z offset is still correct. So you're gonna put some stress on your print head. You might lift up on the print head a little bit when you remove the filament. You might push down on the print head a little bit when you load the new filament. So you wanna make sure that you're not over or under extruding here. So what I mean is you want just the slightest little smush as your filament is extruding. So that way you have a nice solid bond. But if it's printing too low, you're actually gonna back the filament up and you're gonna potentially jam your print head. If it's printing too high, your layers are gonna split. So you can go into the tune window and manually adjust your Z offset to make sure that this looks as it should. And for this particular design, I was doing two filament changes. So once the black was finished, my 3D printer automatically paused and I again swapped to a different filament to create the green. I think the final effect for this is very cool looking. It's not, as I mentioned, the only way to do multi-material or multi-color 3D printing, but it isn't that much effort and it does give you a really awesome design, especially when you're trying to create something a little bit more small and delicate. This is perhaps an easier way than simply printing in separate parts and gluing. I hope you found this helpful. Please don't forget to subscribe for future tutorials and guides and happy printing.